your reaction to these numbers? Because, I mean, these lockdown measures didn't go into effect until mid-March when it came to the Philippines. Is the worst yet to come? Yes, I think that uh, puts it very appropriately. The worst is uh, definitely uh, yet to uh, come, especially because, you know, even as things have been uh, loosening uh, slightly on the Luzon side of things, uh, we have seen them expand the lockdown to some other uh, areas. And uh, frankly, you know, uh, the, the figures for Q1 are even slightly worse than our massively below consensus forecast, you know, which was around 0.4%. YOY for... Uh, Q1. So, so basically, I think from here we we know that you know private investment has been in doldrums for a while now. Uh, what we need to see is that how much private consumption has cratered, and to what extent can, could that possibly be offset by higher public investment? I think that's that's how it's going to play out. And you know, economies like the Philippines, like Indonesia, like India, Priyanka. I mean. They were largely speaking, I guess, protected from, let's say, the global trade war that we saw last year. So they were less exposed to global growth and tourism. And now you're seeing with this virus, th there's a crisis when it comes to domestic demand. Does that make Southeast Asia a little bit more vulnerable to the rest of, of the region? Yeah, I think that's very aptly put because even when things broke out in, in February, we were more worried about supply chain disruptions, you know, external impacts. But as lockdowns became more widespread or containment measures, as you would put them, uh, within uh, within the regions, we've seen a heavy uh, toll on domestic activity. So, for example, uh, the highest cost from lockdowns within Asia, ASEAN, we think, is for Philippines at 5.8% of uh, GDP, which where it has al also been the most... Uh, Stringent. Uh, Priyanka, it's uh, Tom here in Beijing. Uh, to what extent then is that picture uh, also pulled lower by the fact that the policy response in this part of the world, at least in Southeast Asia, is more constrained necessarily, particularly on the fiscal front? Uh, is, how much of a headwind is that for those economies looking ahead to the second half of the year? So, you know, on the face of it, you have to have some big relief packages as a share of GDP, you know, like Malaysia and Thailand, double-digit figures. But once you actually dig into them, uh, there's very little, as you say, uh, you know, in terms of actually what they're directly spending to stimulate the economy uh, for when it emerges out of lockdowns and activity begins to uh, pick up. And then that obviously constrains uh, to the extent that growth can rebound in the second half of the here. And, and this is also, you know, because of the nature of this crisis, it's, it's both a supply shock and it will be followed by a demand shock, which we are now beginning to uh, feel as well. So despite, you know, even even if fiscal responses do pick up and then we do expect them to pick up, we're expecting a widening of deficits to 7%, 8% levels, for example, in, in Philippines and Indonesia. Uh, it's just the nature of the pandemic, which is so massive in its economic impact, that you would still see substantial growth contractions for full years. And switching focus to India specifically, we've seen that the worst, the, the world's worst PMI data out of that country. And of course, uh, restrictions remain in place. 122 million people uh, made unemployed. In terms of the labour market, to what extent can those people be put back to work when the restrictions are eased? How quickly will that happen? And how and to what extent will that help to, to refuel the growth picture in India? You know, specifically focusing on employment, you, you've already seen, you know, according to private sector uh, surveys, you've already seen a huge surge in unemployment to double digits in the early part of uh, April as well. Not, not surprising, you know, everybody has seen those uh, pictures and news stories of migrant workers uh, queuing up to go back to this uh, domicile space, and they've actually now been to been allowed to uh, uh, go back. So, so that's one part of unemployment, and and. That might, you know, see a quicker recovery once lockdown is relatively quicker, I would say, because I think people would still be scared about traveling for a while to come. But but as, as you know, the laborers trickle back to the cities, you, you would see, you know, those employment pick back up. They're largely co concentrated in sectors like construction, uh, low-end manufacturing, gig economies, etc. Uh, but what we have not yet seen and what we are probably going to see in, in Q3 or so are, are layoffs in the organized sector as companies start to, you know, deal with, you know, the, the, the muted demand that, that hits them. And then we see more concerns in terms of balance sheet, company outlooks, et cetera. So I think that, that's the second wave of unemployment uh, we need to be prepared for. So, you know, unemployment spikes to about, you know, 9% in Q2 and then does remain elevated in my forecast in Q3 as well.
Wow. Yeah. And the, the RBI, Priyanka, has flooded the system with liquidity. And we've seen banks extend some credit to some of these larger corporations. But when it comes to the small and weaker corporates out there that need it the most, I don't think they're quite getting that kind of funding. So how, how do you declog those transmissions for, for especially these smaller businesses out there? Yeah, I mean, what we're seeing is a lot of indirect support coming through. Now, now those help in normal kind of, uh, you know, growth slowdown. But what we here have are, are, you know, you know, everybody has said it, I'm going to say it again, the cliche, unprecedented times. And then it requires much more direct support in terms of uh, lending, you know, uh, lending facilities being uh, sent up and how you're actually going to channel, you know, something something like a, a PPP program that you have in the, in the U.S. so that they have direct access to funds rather than, you know, giving liquidity to banks. So clearly averse at this point of time, as you've seen from the from the low offtake of these operations being uh, announced uh, by the uh, RBI. So that, that SME segment is part of this unemployment story that I was just talking about because that's where you're going to see the bigger hit Priyanka. come through as the lockdown eases.